LG gets a bad rap sometimes for some minor features of their phones. The G3 had a great 1440p screen that also sapped its battery life. The G4 had a fancy leather back, but its camera and chipset lagged just behind other flagships. But despite these little issues, LG continually, genuinely tries to innovate with each smartphone iteration. This time around, LG's big experiment is adding modular capabilities and special accessories to the G5. So, did LG taking a chance pay off this time, or do we have a gimmick on our hands? Well, the answer, like quantum physics and your last relationship, is a little complicated. Now first, a note about the exterior. Some people were confused by the physical design of this phone at first because LG says it's constructed using a metal unibody design, but the exterior feels like plastic. That's because LG put a layer of primer on top of the aluminum body and then a layer of microdized pigment containing small metal particles on top, which makes it kind of look premium, but not feel that way. Regardless, I don't care how a phone feels really because I always put cases on mine. And you should too. Anyways, let's get the raw specs out of the way. The LG G5 packs a 5.3 inch 2560 by 1440 IPS LCD display covered in Gorilla Glass 4. Inside, there's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 chipset with Adreno 530 GPU, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, expandable up to two terabytes thanks to a micro SD card slot, a removable 2800 milliamp hour battery, 16 and eight megapixel dual rear cameras with laser autofocus and optical image stabilization, a front-facing 8 megapixel camera, quick charge 3.0, AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, NFC infrared blaster, and rear-mounted fingerprint sensor. Onto the device tour, the physical dimensions of the device measure 149.4 by 73.9 by 7.7 .7 millimeters. On the front, we've got the selfie cam, light sensor, and ear speaker up top with just the LG logo at the bottom. Interestingly, the screen curves very slightly on the top edge, which I suppose Makes it a little easier on your ear when you answer a call. Now that's true innovation. On the right side, we've got the single tray for the nano SIM and micro SD cards. On the left, we've got a simple flat volume rocker and another button that releases the bottom module. More on that later. On the top, there's the audio jack, IR emitter, and secondary mic. And the bottom holds the primary mic, USB 3.0 Type-C port, and unfortunately, the speaker grill. I hold out hope for a day when phones will have front-facing speakers. If only. And on the back, we have the dual camera setup with LED flash, laser autofocus system, and color spectrum sensor, which is slightly raised above the regular phone surface. Under that, we have the power button, which is also the fingerprint sensor. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the key feature of the G5. It's basically the first modular smartphone made by a major phone manufacturer. Press that button I mentioned earlier, and you can detach the bottom of the phone, which brings the bright yellow battery with it. You can then swap out the battery with a fresh one. LG cell extra batteries as well as a very interesting battery charging cradle so you can have it charged and ready. It also has a USB type A port so you can charge other devices with it in a jiffy so that's kind of nice. Or instead of a battery change you can swap in one of LG's modular accessories which they're calling friends. Now right now the only swappable modules you can get are an audio deck made in collaboration with Bang and Ulufsen, which unfortunately we didn't get to test, and the Cam Plus attachment which gives you some physical controls for the camera, but more modules are on the way, apparently. Beyond the actual modules, LG's other friends consists of a 360 degree camera, a standalone VR headset that connects to the G5 via USB, both of which we have here, as you can see. But we missed out on the wireless headset and the rolling bot, which is a little camera equipped doohickey that can be controlled by the phone or can roll around by itself. Now the concept of swapping the modules out is an interesting one. At the very least, it makes it easier than ever to replace your battery, but I think it's hampered by two things. First, that you have to switch the phone off in order to do the switch, and second, that the modules themselves don't really seem to add that much functionality. The Cam Plus gives you a dial to control zoom and buttons for taking a picture, recording video, and launching the camera. These do make operating the phone as a camera a little easier, and the module has an integrated 1200 milliamp hour battery that, 
boosts your phone battery life, but what I really would have liked to see are a couple dials for changing camera settings, like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. As it is, you're able to adjust those using the G5's manual camera mode, but I found adjusting those settings with touchscreen sliders to be awkward in every phone implementation I've seen. These modules are fun to swap out, and I hope that other companies take LG's lead with the concept, and that LG continues to elaborate on it, but the whole concept does feel pretty first gen. I can feel the battery rattling inside the phone when I shake it. Oi. Now the other modules we had were a 360 degree camera which can shoot 1440p video. I'm not sure how that works with spherical images, but there you go. It's got a micro SD card slot and a 1200 milliamp hour battery, and it connects to the G5 for a live preview using its app, although you don't have to connect it to the phone in order to use it. You can just press the shutter button. LG also felt the need, since VR is the current zeitgeist, to make a VR headset called the 360 VR. Now this doesn't use the G5 as its display like Samsung's Gear VR. It's got its own display, which is apparently 639 pixels per inch. It connects to the G5 via USB-C and has a headphone port with an OK and back button for navigating. Running a VR experience was as simple as plugging in the headset, opening the G5's VR app and putting the headset on. So that's cool. What isn't cool is everything else about the headset. It doesn't fully cover your eyes, so there's a lot of light bleed, the resolution is low, and the screen door effect is prominent, and there's tons of motion blur when you move your head around. LG could definitely have gone without including this particular friend in the lineup. Now, with all that said, we haven't actually talked about what it's like to use the phone. LG's custom Android skin makes some modifications to the stock 6.0 Marshmallow experience, including initially removing the app drawer altogether. They re later released an update with an option to add it back, which I promptly enabled. For some reason, LG also removed their multi-window functionality that they had previously. There's a few built-in Q-slide apps that can be opened in their own windows, but other than that, LG's Optimus Android skin is pretty light on changes other than the aesthetic. In terms of performance, my experience was pretty dang snappy. I never found myself waiting for the phone to keep up with what I was doing. In Geekbench 3, I got a score of 2,347 for a single core and 5,422 for multi-core, which apparently puts it at the head of the pack. Similarly, in Antutu Benchmark, the G5 got a score of 128,614, apparently beating out the Galaxy S7 and the LG G5. Wait, what? Now the camera, or cameras, is definitely where things get interesting. One is 16 megapixels with a f1.8 aperture and 78 degree field of view, and the other is 8 megapixels with an f2.4 aperture and 135 degree field of view. Unlike the HTC One M8, the dual cameras don't serve to adjust focus after the shot is taken. They work in tandem to basically give you a wide range to zoom in and out, transitioning between the lenses at a certain point. This camera is definitely the widest angle smartphone camera I've ever seen. It looks, it looks like a GoPro when you look at the live feed. Overall photo quality is great in good light and it's right up there with other high-end phone cameras like the Galaxy S7. Low light is okay. My Galaxy S6 still performed better in very low light, although the 16 megapixel lens on the G5 does a little better than the wide angle thanks to its wider aperture. You also won't necessarily want to zoom in for a photo using the wide angle. The quality is fine zoomed out, but 8 megapixels doesn't give you a, a ton of room to play around with. Well, I think this video has gone on long enough. Time for a conclusion. LG should most definitely be commended for innovating in the realm of stagnant smartphone design. In a market where every new phone that comes out is a simple metal slab, LG is at least trying to shake things up. Unfortunately, this implementation has some weak points. The sort of wiggly connection between the bottom portion, the questionable usefulness of the available modules, not to mention that the friends are all somewhat expensive comparatively, especially on top of the phone's MSRP of 649 US, although you can find it selling for less. But those are all complaints about the modular aspect of the G5. By itself, it's still one of the best Android phones on the market. The camera is solid, battery life is great, and its performance is top notch. So if you want some extra toys to play with and you're willing to give it a shot, the G5 will give you what you want from other smartphones plus a little extra. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Click here to watch more videos. Follow us on Twitter over here. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, with the remaining intro or outro time, I figure I should see how fast I can switch out the battery. Okay, turning the phone off.
Power off, power off. Gotta wait for it to power off. The light's still there. And... Okay. Okay. Oh, take the battery off. Go get another battery. It's the same battery. I don't have a replacement. Stick it in. Uh, power on. I wasn't timing myself, but... Pretty impressive. And... Okay, well, that's enough.